All right, so if you didn't hear that, if you get a message, if you downloaded the, the uh, Visual Studio 2017 before the break, the first time you go through it after 30 days, it'll say that your trial has ended. But you, what you will need to do is they'll say, sign in with your Microsoft account. And if you don't have one, there should be a link there that says, click here to create one. All right, after you do that, then it should never ask you again. It's free software forever, all right? I mean, you can already tell it's a little bit behind. It's 2019 and we're using 2017. They're already working on 2019. It's not impossible that for the class that we will, we will be working on for fall of this year, we may have to download uh, Visual Studio 2019 if it's available. And if that's the case, I would uninstall 2017 and then install 2019. All right. <clears throat> All right, so here's the rules. They talk about identifiers. An identifier is something you create. Does that make sense? It's a variable you create. It's a function or method name that you create. Or it's a... Uh, class that you create. Now, look at this, please, everybody. It says it must begin with one of these. Don't ever use anything other than a letter. It makes no sense to begin with an underscore or an at sign. Why? Because typically underscores and at signs are things that are used by this, uh, behind the scenes by the system itself. You should never start anything with either one of those. Just start it with letters. <clears throat> In fact, you're best off other than that for the rest of it, just have letters and numbers. And if you can, only have letters. Makes it much easier. Can't use keywords. I know they're going to have it in here someplace. I don't know where it is. Might be the next page. But you can always go in and just type in C sharp keywords and you'll get a listing. All right. This is very similar to when we talked about the keywords last semester for JavaScript. Many of the keywords are the same, not all of them. <clears throat> and again, some of the keywords, notice in here, go to is a keyword, but you never use it. You, uh, technically, you can in a very special circumstance, you'll never have to. So why is it a keyword? So you don't use go-tos, basically, is why. All right. Oh, yeah, there they are on the next page. All right. Now, they name some stuff here, and they show you these are all valid class names. Notice, again, all of them start... All of them start with a capital letter. I will expect all of your class names to be the same. Then notice underneath this. It says these are unconventional, but they're legal. You shouldn't do this. All right? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. These are all illegal. And the main reason that they're illegal is they have blank spaces in them. The first two, class is a keyword. You can't start it with a number, and you can't have special characters in there. Word for two truths and a lie. All right. I already mentioned this to you, but I'm going to say it again. We will be adding the, what's called the system namespace to our programs. We'll be using that. What it means is you'll do less typing than you would otherwise. Comments? Somebody tell me when we did a comment in JavaScript, how did we do a single line comment? Remember that? Anybody remember that? Remember these? Two forward slashes? That was a single line comment? 
Remember a multi-line comment? Slash, star, and ending it with star slash? Exactly the same in C-sharp. So comments are done in exactly the same way. All right? There's also a special kind of comment that's called an XML document format comment. It's really not discussed at all in this book. show you an example of how you can use comments again if you look at this line up here that's in gray it says system dot console dot right line all right so there is a system class which has inside of it a console class which has inside of it a right line method you can write system dot console dot something every time Anybody want to take a wild guess here? If there is a system dot console dot right line to write, what do you think you use to read? System dot console dot read line. All right. So notice if we include this, instead of putting this system dot console dot right line, if we instead, and it's totally legal to do that, we put at the top of our program using system, then it's just console.writeline, etc. But instead of putting that, if we say using, and you got to put the word static in there, system.console, then it's just write line. I'm going to expect you to do that because it makes sense. It's less typing for you. Since you have less typing, there's less chance you're going to screw something up. Now they've got this you do it thing in here. All right, it says now, now that you understand the basic framework, you're ready to enter your first C sharp program into a text editor. All right, and I'm going to give you some time in a little bit to actually do this. So you type it in just like this. So it's all the stuff in bold. You type in these two lines, continues on, another line, continues on, another line. So the whole thing just looks like this, all right? And then when you go in and you run it, it literally is just going to look like on the screen, they don't even show it. It's just going to be like a, like a DOS screen, a black screen with white writing that says, hello world. That's it, all right? Now, I don't expect you to get much of anything out of this, but what I want to show you quickly is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab their program. All right, because I'm lazy. I'm just going to grab the finished copy of it here, if it lets me. Let's see if it does. Well, it did, but it, you can see what it did. So again, that's a complete program. Why am I showing you that? Because this is what you're going to do if you're writing a console program, all right? So you come in here and you start up C Sharp or Visual Studio. This is the, down here, no, it's kind of hard to see, looks like a little purple bow tie when you get it all done. So you click there to start. The first time that you bring it up, it may not look exactly like mine unless you've configured the system. It might come up and ask you, 
what language are you using, and some other stuff. If it does, just choose C sharp, which is C with a pound sign. All right. But when I come in here, then eventually yours will look like this. You don't need this start page. So you'll just come in and you'll type in file, new, project. And we'll do this again as a class, too. And it says, well, what kind of class do you want to create? Well, I want a visual C sharp class. Does that make sense to everybody? Because that's what we're using. And for now, it's just going to be a console application. And it says, what do you want to call it? Where do you want to save it? Hear that? What do you want to call it and where do you want to save it? So I'm just going to call this Hello World. All right. I'm not going to put any spaces in there. And it says, where do you want to save it? Well, I'm going to save it right to my desktop. All right. So there it is. Oops. Come on. All right. So it's saying, Hello World, save to the desktop. The framework, don't even worry about that for right now. Notice, create new Git repository. We're going to keep using this stuff. You're going to keep using Git. For now, though, this is just a garbage two or three line program. I'm not even going to create that because it's not worth it. I will create a directory for my solution. I click OK. And here's what I get. Now, I don't expect the stuff that's in here to make sense to you. It's okay if it doesn't. All right? The only thing, basically, I don't need any of this stuff. I really don't need the using system, but I'll keep that in there. And I'm going to type in using static system.console. All right? And then that one line that I had before... which I think I put in here. There we go. Just this right line. And I'm going to put that right there. That's the whole program. You'll notice if you take a look at it, a few things as far as coloring goes. Can you tell how line one is in gray? Can you see that? That means it's not being used. In fact, if I take my mouse and I put it up here, I get this little light bulb. And it says, this is, this is not necessary. So it says, if I want to fix that, I can click where it says, show potential fixes. Right there. And it says, hey, if you want, I'll get rid of it for you. I'll say, okay, and it's gone. All right. You'll notice if you keep looking, <coughs> some words are in dark, royal blue. I don't know what you'd call that color. Those are keywords. All right, using, static, namespace, class, string, void. All right. You'll see that some of them where it says like class program, that's a system keyword. So that's in a different color blue. You'll notice that I've got a string there that says hello world. Anytime you create a string, it puts it in red. All right you'll notice that there's only one executable line of code in here. Technically, there's two, but it's right line. It needs a semicolon on the end. Technically, the using statement is also an executable statement, so it needs a semicolon at the end. Now, if I did this correctly, if I did do it correctly, then when I run this, you should see a DOS window that comes up and it says, Hello World. Does that make sense to everybody? But you got to look real fast because it's going to go away like that. And I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. All right. But what I do then, it's always a good idea to click your save all, which is your double disk icon here. Then I can either say build, build solution, or I can say debug, start debugging. But the easiest way to run this is to just come over here and click this green arrow. If I click that, it's thinking about it. You can tell because it's spinning up here. See, you may or may not have noticed it said hello world and it just left. All right, well, I don't want it to leave, so I can type in the word here, read line, like that. <coughs> Okay, so I'll hit that, and I'll run it again, 
And notice now it says hello world. And it, I'll, I'll take your question in a second. It's just going to sit there until I hit in. All right. Now, again, in chapters one and two, the programs we create will look like this. They will be console programs. <coughs> when we get into later chapters, you probably most of you, if not all of you, will use GUI. Yes. Okay. Let's go back and look at all the steps all over again. All right. So what I did, and you can have just so you know, you can have multiple sessions of Visual Studio running at once. Okay. So if I did that too fast, I apologize, but let's just look at it again. All right. So what I did was I really didn't need this start page here, so I just closed it. All right. And I did a file, new, project, and I made sure Visual C Sharp was selected, and I chose console app .NET Framework. And again, we're going to do this. We're going to do this as a class. That's why my hope is tomorrow, everybody's going to have this loaded, right? We come in here and we'll start writing code right away. And what I'll do is I'll probably even, we'll create something pretty simple, and then I'll show you how to do it if you wanted to make it graphical, even though that's not until Chapter 3. All right. So again, you give it a name. You give it a place to live. Did I answer your question, John? Okay. All right. Now, just so you see this, a, a couple of things. You don't have to write this down or anything, but I want you to see it. All right? So I'm going to change this program around a little bit. Instead of Hello World, I, don't, I want it to ask you your name, and then I want it to say Hello so if Luke runs it and he puts in Luke, it'll say, hello, Luke. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to come in here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. And I can't remember. Okay, it's a little, it's a lower case. I'm going to say string. We'll just say name. And we'll initialize it to the empty string. All right. First thing to notice is that name right now has got green squigglies under it. Green means warning. All right. What, what if you put my if I put my mouse there, it would say I've got a variable called name that's not doing anything right now. And in fact, if I put my mouse here, it would say if I clicked here, it would allow me to get rid of it. I don't want to do that. All right. But I do want to change this. Okay. Instead of right line hello world, I want it to come up here and say. In double quotes, what is your name? All right. And then I wanted to do a read line, but the problem is what I have to do is I have to take what I read in there and save it someplace. Well, I've got a variable called name, don't I? Name equal read line. See that? That's pretty simple. Now I want to do one more write line. And I want it to say, hello plus name. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this program, but we'll make it a little better in just a second. So there it is. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to run it again. Now it says, what is your name? What is my name? Well, you already saw again, it went away too fast. So let's fix that. So we'll put another read line at the bottom. So it says, what is your name? Jeff Scott. Hello, Jeff Scott. Make sense? All right. Well, let's, for lack of better words, let's pretty it up a little bit. So instead of write line, let's put the word right there. That won't force that to go on to a new line. So it'll say, what is your name? And then my cursor will be right next to where it says, what is your name? You don't have to do that, but it looks a little nicer. So I'll put in Jeff. Now for right line, where I want it to say, hello, Jeff, I'll put before this, 
backslash n. Remember that from JavaScript? It's a new line. So I just made two changes. I went back and changed the right line to a right, and I added a backslash n. All right, let's save it and run it one more time. So you can see now there's my cursor on the same line as my statement. So, And then now it says, hello, Jeff Scott, and there's a blank line between. That seemed pretty simple. All right. But to just show you the kinds of things that we're going to do, let's put in a couple other things. All right. How about int age, and I'll set that equal to zero by default. Now, You'll notice if you look here, we're not using the word var. Int means whole number. So notice if I came through here and I put in 3.7, I'm going to get an error. That's not green, that's red. It's an integer, it's a whole number. And I tried putting a fractional component. So always use whole numbers there. All right? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Well, it has floating points. We're going to look at all that stuff. Yeah. All right. So if I went and added on to this, all right, and I said, how about this? What is your age? All right. Now, notice that when I do this, Okay, why am I getting an error right there? Anybody want to take a wild guess? True or false? Age was, was defined as being a variable that holds a number. True or false? True. Read line expects that you're reading a string. All right. So I can come in here and I can call, I'll do this. There's different ways you can do it, but I'll do a string, age, str, and I'll set that equal to nothing. So instead of putting it into age, I'm going to put it into age str. Notice how the error went away. All right. Now it'll take anything. So when I ask the age, I could put in hello, and it would think that's my age, which doesn't make a lot of sense. All right. Oh, let's see. I should have probably looked at this before I started this. Well, I'm going to have to look this one up because I don't remember. But I have to parse it. I have to do a conversion. All right? Now, one thing I can do for now, just to show you, because this, this would be very poor to do, but it wouldn't work. That'll work. And as long as I put in a number, it'll be just fine. And it'll work if I don't put in a number. That's what's bad about it. So what is your name? Jeff. What is your age? OK, 
Okay? See, that worked. That's not a problem. But the problem with this is, now that I'm sticking that back into a string, if I run this one more time, and I put in, and it asks me my age, and I put, none of your business. See, it took it. That's not what we're going to want to have happen. All right? Stupid me that I, I spent all my time last night working on Java for the afternoon class. think I could remember how to do this, but it's in here, and we'll get it tomorrow. All right. But what I wanted to show you more than anything else in here was the kind of variables that we'll be using. All right. Double. A double is a number is, is a number that could have, for example, could have a decimal place. All right, so I could say double salary equals, you know, and I could say, for example, $50,000 and 34 cents. Notice how it took that. All right, we're going to have bool. It's not boolean in this language, it's bool. Is married. What can a boolean hold? Come on, you know this from last year. What can a Boolean hold? True or false. All right. So I'm getting those green squigglies because I'm not using them in the program. All right. I could come in here and say, I think it's char. We're going to find out. MI for middle initial equals single quote P, single quote. All right. See that? A char is for a single character all right and that can be any character on a keyboard and it can be actually any character in what's called the Unicode character set anything that's in there all right but just, I'm just trying to show you here and we're going to get into these in the next chapter but these are some of the variable types that are available to you all right some languages like Java for example call these primitive variables they can only hold one value at a time. I can sit there and set my age to something, and then maybe, even though it's not, maybe tomorrow's my birthday. So I could change that from 62 to 63. All right, but then the old value that was in there goes away. So if you run through this, they have you build your first program. Now, you may or may not care about this, but if you look up on the screen here, it says that after you write a program, what happens when you run through those steps that I showed you is it goes and it compiles it into what's called IL, intermediate language. Then there's a compiler that translates it into executable code. And you might be like, do I have to care about that? The only reason that you might want to care about that is it is totally legal in this language to show you this here, that when you write your code, that you can actually write it. And if you've got the software, you can write, you can run your code right from Notepad++. You may say, would I want to do that? No, I don't think you'd ever want to, but you could. You'd only want to do that for console programs. You'd never want to do that for an actual GUI program that we're going to be writing soon. All right? So it says if you don't receive any errors when you're compiling, you should get results. And they go through compiling using the Visual Studio IDE. That's what I just showed you. You do not get tested in here that it asks, where is this? Where is this? I'm never going to give you a blank picture like this or a picture like this. Remove all these and ask you to fill them in. Does that make sense? Over time, much of what's on here will become really, really familiar to you. All right? When you get an error message, well... Let's see if what happens when we get an error message. Okay. In fact, you've already, maybe you have and maybe you haven't seen that, but I'm going to lift this up. This is my error window down here. 
So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to leave off that semicolon. All right. So I get that here. What's going to happen? In fact, this is not my error window. I was working in a different language before. So let's view windows. Well, I'll do this. I'll run it. See that? It says there were build errors. Would you like to continue and run the last successful build? Virtually 100% of the time, when you get that error, say no. All right? Then it shows you down here what your errors were. Do you notice that I got some yellow triangles? Those are warnings. The red thing is an error. I will expect that when you turn in code, it will be free of both errors and warnings. Now, let's say Luke's working on his assignment, and he's like, I can't get rid of this one goofy warning. It works just fine. Then come up and ask. And I'm not even saying I'll be able to figure it out. All right? But a lot of times what happens when, when you get an, uh, a warning like this, you just grab the warning or the error and you put it into your, into your clipboard and you paste it right into Google, it'll show you what it is. You're not the only one who's ever had that error. But this is your error window here. All right? Now, also, I hate doing this. The All of these windows that you see here, there are one, two, three, four, five of them. They're all what are called dockable. What does that mean? It means I can grab this up here, and I can move it anywhere I want. I can grab this, and I can move that. Any, you see that? You can do that kind of stuff. Sometimes when people start doing that, they're like, this is really cool. Then they start working with it, and they're like, no, no, i got to put that down here, and i got to make it big, you know, and you get nuts, and you're like, I just wish it looked like it used to look. So if you do this, and you want it to go back and look the way it used to look, you just come down here to Tools. Uh, it's either Customize, oh, I think it's Options. To Tools, Import and Export Settings, right there. And you tell it, you know what, I want you to reset all my settings. And then it says, do you want to keep the ones you have? If you do, you can. I don't want to. So I say no. Just reset everything. Click Next. Yeah, it's C Sharp. Finish. Click Close. And it put everything back again. See that? Sometimes people like the stuff on the right to be on the left or vice versa. You know, might you might say, I don't care. Then leave it the way it is or move it around. But if you move it around and don't like it, you'll be able to fix it. All right. <clears throat> All right. What else is left in this chapter? You know, she gives you, she tells you how you can use the IDE or not use it, and then she says why you might want to do one or do the other. So she has you rewrite the same program again without using without using the IDE, and you run it right from the command line. Okay? There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. All right. So that's it. I would strongly suggest you take a look at the chapter summary at the end of each chapter. Again, by and large, it's going to hold all of the questions that will be on the test, on the tests rather. All right? They've got key terms in here for each chapter, and then for each chapter, they also have. Notice there's a lot of key terms. Review questions, and after the review questions, and I think there's almost always 20 of these, they have exercises. All right, so pause this for a second. Now, what's going to happen? Not today, because we don't all have it. I'm going to assume that by tomorrow morning when you come in here, everyone 
everyone is going to have this loaded. All right. And then what we'll do is we will write two of these programs that are in here as a class, and then I'll assign two of them. All right. And also, and I have to make sure I get these files to you, I'll get them to you tomorrow. There are debugging exercises. And I'm going to ask that you do those, at least for the first few chapters, possibly for all 14. These are errors that you're going to find on your own programs when you run them. So what the author does is she gives you programs that are broken and says fix them. So I will expect you to fix them. As we did last semester, when I give you out an assignment, it will be due no later than one week from the day in which it's assigned. I'm going to try to do a better job this semester is on that day of grading everything I have. All right? And I, I don't want it where anybody falls behind. Some people did last semester. You know who you are. All right? But I'm hoping that doesn't happen this semester. I'm not going to do the case problems. You can look at those. That is a running case problem through all 14 chapters. Maybe we should do those. I don't know. All right, so let me stop this. So I'm just going to, for right now,